Okay, now in this uh, lesson, we're gonna uh, our main focus is gonna be on adding walls and having our character, um, you know, be confined by the walls in the room. Um, however, uh, one thing I just want to go back here. If you remember last lesson, you made well. I showed you how to make them go left, right, and stop going left and right. Uh, hopefully, you were able to do the same for up and down, but. Uh, while I'm at it, I'm just going to show you a trick because I need to get my game moving up and down. It's not really a trick. But um, one of the neat things you can do in Game Maker 2 is if I have an event already, I can right-click on it and I could duplicate that event rather than just adding a new event. So now I'm going to do keyboard up for my up. Now it added that. Now if you notice, there's already an action here. Now I duplicated left, so it still says he's going to move left. But it's kind of nice to be able to real quickly with a few less um, steps, do that. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to duplicate it again for keyboard down. And again, i got to change it. And there we have it. Okay? So that's that. And likewise, I'll do the same here. I'll duplicate this and make it key release up. And make it so he's going up at a speed of zero. And key, I'll duplicate it again, key release down, and make this one so it goes down at a speed of 5. So now my character at least moves in all the directions. So now I'm going to add a sprite and an object for the walls. Um, so I'm going to create a sprite, SPR wall, and I'm going to load a sprite, and I happen to in my folder have a wall sprite, okay? And I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to add an object for OBJ wall. Again, notice I'm staying true to my naming convention. And I'm going to add that sprite in there. And click OK. And now in my room, and notice I changed it uh, 1280 by 768 is what I meant to have my room be. And if you notice, if I move around, this, I can kind of see the different parts of my room. There's a square around here that will show me how much of the room I'm seeing at any time. And I'm going to move him here for a second. And I'm going to start to build in the walls. And I can either click, 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 or I can hit Control Shift and click around to add more. Now, if you notice, um, these are some of the shortcuts here. Now, I didn't make it all the way up because, and if you notice, I accidentally uh, went out of the, outside the lines, which doesn't really matter because it's outside the room, but I'm going to get rid of those. And here we go. Now I'm going to head to the right here. Oh. Right clicking on it was what helped me delete it and there we go all right so now I have at least the outside walls and just for the moment now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have um, I'm gonna test this out and see what happens so when I hit play you will notice that I move around now all four directions, which is wonderful. But what's happening here? Uh-oh. Doesn't seem like I should be able to walk through a wall, correct? So let's um let's address that issue now. So that's where we're gonna now learn about um dealing with collisions. Now, interestingly, I could set it up that when um the wall collides with Bilbo. Bilbo stops, but it makes more sense to me whenever possible, since I'm controlling my main character, to program the main character. So here what I'm going to do is I am going to program Bilbo that when he collides with the wall, okay, he, and this is going to be a little bit different than what we did before. I'm using this different um, move direction instead of, it's actually called move free instead of move fixed. And this is where we're going to learn our first kind of like built-in variable. So because he's going to hit the wall coming from any different direction, I'm going to have it be that when he hits the wall, he's going to keep going in whatever direction he was going in. 
So if you notice, I typed in the word direction. That's a built-in variable that means the direction that I'm set to. And he's going to go to speed of zero. Again, this is because of that issue with the shooting that um, I don't want it to seem unrealistic where he is colliding with the wall on the left, but then he tries to shoot while standing there and he shoots the wrong way or something. So I'm going to click OK. So now I'm going to test my game again. And I move. And, ah, see, I still go through the wall, okay? Now, you could laugh if you want, but um, what the reason that happened is I never made my wall solid, okay? So that's very important. So the wall has to be solid, and there we have it. And now I'll try that again. And now he does not go through the wall, okay? So there we go. Now, the next thing, and I'll just kind of get you started, but I'll want you to do this part kind of on your own, is you're going to create now a maze type environment. Now, if you notice what I'm kind of doing, and you don't have to, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a space in here between each, um, because sometimes when, when the sprite is the same size as the walls, if I had the walls right next to each other, he would, uh, there would be a lot of times where he would kind of like have a hard time getting through the wall, or he'd get stuck and such, so I'm going to kind of safeguard from that this way and ultimately maybe I will add some you know you're gonna basically be making like a maze oops I probably didn't want to do that a maze type environment okay and now again I play the game and now Bilbo has to walk around and make his way through this game okay um, and I would say that your job now is going to be to create the rest of the maze the way you'd like it and test it and essentially let's just say for argument's sake um, we want to get to like a goal or I'll even add this in for you we want to add let's say a door and we'll call this SPR door and for this we will appropriately use a door okay and the object door, OBJ door, and let's just say again that we ultimately want our player to have to get, like let's say the exit's gonna be here. Later we'll add keys and locks and make it a little more challenging and things, but for your sake, try to get it that you create a maze, your guy moves through and can get to there successfully, and then we'll move on to adding enemies uh, keys, locks, and so much more as we move forward. Okay, good luck with that.